<sighs> Coffee time. What a cold Monday. It's really hard on these cold Mondays to not drink coffee until I get to see you guys. All right, tablet. We got everything. We're ready to go. Here we go with a shovel. And three, and two, and one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is February 1st. 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Mm. Good morning, Andrew. Andrew says, good morning, Jeremy. Guess what? My book comes today, and my buddy Greg's episode comes out. Well, that's right. Greg's episode will be out any moment now, and a bunch of you who supported me by making a purchase of my very first novel back Thursday or Friday. You probably got shipping notifications. Mine is supposed to arrive today as well. I believe I was the first person to buy it. I may not have been, but I would be surprised if I wasn't. And that was Thursday. It should show up today. So knock on wood, I will have my own copy of my own novel. Fancy. Um, so right off the bat, it is cold. It is, it's warmed up a, a degree or two, but when I got up about 45 minutes ago, it was negative 11 degrees Fahrenheit. And for those of you internationally, that's negative 28. It is cold out. The furnace is going and the wood stove is going. I usually don't do both, but it is cold. And it was cold all weekend and I struggled to keep it warm enough in here. <laughs> Andrew says, if you want me to autograph your copy, I will. Well, that would be amazing. Thank you. You know what? It wouldn't be a bad idea to have you and Stacy autograph a copy because you both edited it. And who has an autographed copy of books from all three people who worked on it? I, I consider your contributions incredibly valuable. Writing, knowing that I was going to have people edit it, allowed me to take some chances. It allowed me to focus on certain things that I felt were more important like telling a good story and knowing that other people would be able to step in and say, hey, you got to make some adjustments here and here, or here's something you missed, or this spot doesn't make sense, or uh, in one case, both you and Stacy caught, hey, you're using the wrong name here. This other person actually was the one who said this. That was the kind of stuff that I needed. And it came out well, and so far feedback's been really good, so I'm kind of pumped for that. We'll see. We'll see how positive the feedback is over the next few weeks. And if it's really good, then I'll start on book two. <sighs> Coffee is very good this morning. I had a really good weekend and a good Friday. Friday was pro productive, got everything done. I needed to get done on Friday, finished work at like, I don't know, 3, 3.30, I think it was. I spent the weekend hanging out with some different friends, traveling around in the state. Uh, went to a local science museum, went out for lunch, went out to dinner last night, ate tasty food. It was a good weekend. It was just a good weekend. Started working on my garden plan. I think I showed you some of the, the papers that are piled up here. There's a ton of stuff going on and I was outside in the snow with a tape measure measuring certain things, wanting to get stuff right. I'm going to be even more detailed than normal. Normally I'm just go, oh, we'll just put those things here and those things over there. No, this year I'm measuring. Measuring. I want to be as productive as I can with this food. I want to see how much food I can get off this property. Now, we'll, you know, it's not like I'm going to turn my lawn into a cornfield or anything, but Last year, over the last couple of years, I've developed a number of strategies that allow me to grow food, vegetables, without putting in a lot of time. I don't weed. I don't like weeding. It bores me. It's silly. They just come back. So I found heat treated straw. There are lots of secrets. Secrets that I have unlocked. And so now I'm going to go a little bit deeper with, with the garden. Hander says, Ugh, I hate weeding. Stacy says, you've got a book too? <laughs> Weeding is the worst. Uh, and good morning. 
Uh, the local hardware stores, we've started getting over the last few years this com these compressed bales of heat-treated straw. So you can lay down a ground cover that blocks out the weeds and it doesn't cause more grass to grow and it keeps moisture in and it's cheap, it's like 15 bucks a bale and a bale goes a really long way. Um, let me show you the new toy. This will be relevant on Wednesday. Anybody know what this is? You know what this is? It's called a gimbal phone stabilizer and for the video work that's coming we will be using this. So that happens Wednesday night as I roll out as I film content for my new, my new YouTube channel and I'm excited for that. What else is going on? I've got new lighting over here that's got to get set up for all the various projects that I do, including uh, Whistlekick Live tomorrow night, 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time on Facebook. And what else is around? What else is around here? I don't think anything else. I have to go to the grocery store tonight. Yeah, what's going on tonight? Uh, today. Today is a normal work day, just getting some work done. I have not checked the sales numbers on the novel. I'm curious to see what happened. Uh, Amazon tracks Kindle sales and paperback sales. Paperback sales don't go in until the book is shipped. Most of those books shipped over the weekend. Only one copy shipped Friday. And I don't even think it was mine for some reason. So I, I'm excited to see what those numbers are. I will check on those this morning. Uh, if you follow me personally, pay attention to my personal channels. There is a unrelated to Whistlekick project being announced this morning. Something that is, that could be a big deal. We'll see what happens. Oh, that's so good. What else is going on? I gotta work on my garden plan more, set up the lighting, keep the house warm. I was gonna bring in more wood. Because, so, for people who don't live in a, in a cold area, you may not realize, so, when you, when you heat with wood, you tend to have two piles of wood. You've got the, the pile that's kind of close to your house. In my case, it's in my garage. It's through that wall right there. And in there is, I don't know, what is it, 12 foot by 4 to 5 foot. If it's really cold, it's about a week and a half to two weeks worth of wood. I filled it in the fall and am just now getting through it because it was cold last week. But I've got a bigger pile over there. And so I've got to bring wood from that pile to this pile. So I didn't do that because it was cold and I didn't want to. I wanted to do fun things this weekend. I, there was a little bit of a, a little bit of, I was a little bit more of a grasshopper than an ant this weekend. I should have been more of an ant. If anybody knows that story. You know the story of the grasshopper and the ant? Go look up the story of the grasshopper and the ant yeah, if you don't know that story. That's a very fiery fire. And I cranked it down, too, because it was making weird noises. This is a problem with really old wood. It burns extremely well. It gets very, very hot. Sometimes too hot. It's challenging. Um, the only other thing to report is... Uh, yesterday, a friend of mine gave me a tour... Uh, Stacy so says, tomorrow I get to shovel, oh boy. And Andrew says, come get some more wood. I, I would love to, my friend. I did the math. I can, so Andrew has what he has described as a massive old maple tree. And it's getting cut down. Or maybe it's already cut down. And he's encouraging me to come get wood. Problem is, I don't have a pickup. I don't have a dump truck. I don't have anything that warrants bringing wood, going, driving down there. Um, Driving down to visit is a whole different story. But driving down just for wood. 
have a little car. I don't even have a trailer. I had a trailer, maybe. For the cost of the trailer, I could get a lot of wood. I've, trust me, I've tried to run the economics. The idea of a resource going unutilized that I have access to hurts me to my core. It really does. Uh, oh, so a uh, friend who works in Burlington at this, this beautiful new space gave me a tour. And I may, he's getting me pricing. I may get an office in there. I may, may get, because it is, it's a really cool space. And having somewhere to go that's not, a, not here could be nice. I've done that before. Stacy says, rent a U-Haul, record Thursday shows, business expense. Hmm. Interesting idea. It's not a bad idea, Stacy. I'm not gonna lie. All right, I'm gonna have to think about that one. You may have cracked the code. to do some math. I think Stacy might have figured it out. But, all right, let's see if that episode has hit yet. It did not have, as of a few minutes ago. Let me check. Let me check. Here it is. Sensei Greg Williams. It went live at, right at 6.30. So Sensei Greg Williams had, had a lot of fun with this one. Don't play. Don't play. It's going to play. It's really hard for me to get it to to do that, to just show up without playing. Um, just a great guy. You know, we, we, we get a lot of episodes with people who just tell a good story. They're just, and if you're listening to this instead of watching, I'm using air quotes, because I don't, think it's just. I'm not dismissive. The things that our guests talk about, the stories that they tell, the lives they've lived, they're worth talking about. They're worth telling. Andrew says, he's great. We, we sometimes get trapped into this perspective that normalizes challenge or struggle that, oh, you know, I went through all this and I know all these other people that went through this, so it's not a big deal. Or I did this and all these other people did this, so it's not a big deal. Like earning a black belt, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Earning a black belt or the equivalent in any martial arts school is a big deal. It requires, at the very least, a tremendous amount of time and knowledge, if not also skill and passion and dedication and transforming who you are emotionally, physically, mentally, that there's so much that goes into it. And so few people who set out to do it actually achieve it. Not that anyone couldn't, anybody's capable, but most people don't have the drive. If we believe that cliche statistic within the martial arts, one out of a hundred will earn a black belt, it's a pretty big deal. If we believe that one in a hundred, then more people are going to retire millionaires than are going to earn a black belt if they start training martial arts. Think about that. Done thinking? All right. Let's look at the, the stuff that y'all sent in. Y'all, I like the word y'all. I've always liked the word y'all. I am not from the South. No, wrong button. I need, where's the button? This button? Yes, okay. Uh, today we've got some stuff from Frank. Shout out as always and thank you to Frank. February is Black History Month. We start the month with the first African-American and the first historian to be Secretary of the Smithsonian. Lonnie G. Bunch III is the 14th Secretary. He's been Secretary since June of 2019. 
Why history? Well, first off, I find history fascinating. Secondly, there's a cliche, there's an adage, whatever you want to call it. Those who are unaware of history are doomed to repeat it. History often teaches us to embrace ambiguity, to understand there aren't simple answers to complex questions, and Americans tend to like simple answers to complex questions. So the challenge is to use history to help the public feel comfortable with nuance and complexity. We do have a tendency to oversimplify, don't we? We like solving, quote unquote, solving medical problems with pills or with surgeries, you know, one and done. We like taking books or movies or TV shows and summarizing, boiling them off into cliff notes. We like utility. We, we like a, a, a Swiss Army knife, something that does everything all in one neat little bundle. We like versatility. It shows up in martial arts too. We have a tendency here in the West to want to combine this, that, and the other from other traditional arts to make our own traditional art that we feel covers all situations better than others. It's part of our culture. It's part of how we're raised. But what about nuance? What about complexity? What about our understanding of things that are more challenging to understand? Is there not value in learning what those things are and coming to understand them? becoming more nuanced ourselves in our thinking and our perspective on the world. I think there is. I think there's a lot of value. We think about a form, a kata, a pumse, whatever you want to call it. The more time you spend with it, the more nuance comes out, the better your understanding of something that maybe on the surface is fairly simple, but the forms that have survived the longest have a fair amount of complexity in them. Or at the very least, we, we see complexity. We see complexity in it, even if maybe it isn't there. Complexity is good at times. Simplicity is good at times. I could take the same form and I could do it very simply and I could do it very complexly, complicatedly. I could do it with complexity. And that's how you do anything, right? You can find the simple or you can find the complex and there are times for both. Oh, and let me just say, writing out the date today in the format that we use, year, month, day, with numerals, it was strange. 2021-0201. It was weird. It just looked weird. I, I had to look at it a few times to make sure I wasn't screwing it up. Take a look at it. Tell me it's not a weird number. We want to remember that America is at its best when it's struggling to live up to its stated ideals. Now, what does he mean by that? could mean a number of things. But here's what I think he means. America at its best. What is America at its best? I would assume, given someone who is a historian, who values history and the artifacts of the past, hence the Smithsonian, that they are someone who looks to the founding ideals of the country. The country was founded on principles around discussion and democracy and freedom of speech and hope. Think about, let's take the, the most cliche but best understood modern example of the country, uh, what are the words he uses? This country struggling. 9-11. What happened post 9-11? We did some stuff we probably shouldn't have, but 
immediately after, we took care of each other. We were positive. We stood tall. We were proud of ourselves, of our country, of our neighbors. We were resolved to defend ourselves. We discussed things. And it's interesting that this comes up, that this quote is here, because one of the things I've always said about myself is that I'm at my best when others around me are at their worst. And when I first said it, or thought it, I meant when stuff's going down, when things are challenging. Get out of my way, let me jump in and help. I remember a, a couple friends who were scheduled to move and the rental car company, or the rental truck company was being jerks and, and you know, not caring about the reservation and everything and I jumped in and, they, and I, 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 called the, I called the company, I got the truck truck got there, I helped load the truck. I remember they filled the truck. I was on, there was maybe two and a half feet and I was on my back. Here's the top of the truck and I'm like shimmying on my back and they're giving me things and I'm putting stuff in the truck. I, help, I, I beyond help them move. Right? It was a difficult situation. Sometimes it takes something bad, and I think frequently it takes something bad, something that breaks our acceptance, our threshold of what's okay for us to really step up and do more. It doesn't have to, though. That's not what I mean, because it does have to. Things have to get to a point that we're not accepting of in order to change them. People don't change things that they're fine with, right? They don't. They wait till it's broken or screwed up. Or looks like it's going to be, at least. Yeah, next. There is nothing more powerful than a people, than a nation steeped in its history. And there are a few things as noble as honoring our ancestors by remembering. We could definitely say the same thing about martial arts. There is a value, there is a, a power in understanding where, what you train came from. And I don't just mean far, far back, but your instructor, your instructor's instructor. How about your instructor's peers? Knowing the history of what led to you being able to train is valuable. And that's one of the things we try to chronicle on Martial Arts Radio is all these wonderful stories of all these martial artists. I think it's great, it's fun. It can go too far. There are people who get far too wrapped up in lineage, and especially when it becomes concerned with legitimacy, which I think is pretty much BS. It doesn't matter. History is stories. Stories aren't always true. We, not only is history open to adjustment, but it's open to interpretation. We're in, and this is not a pass, this is not passing a judgment one way or the other. We're at a time now where we are starting to look back on some of our founding leaders in the United States and taking a different perspective on their actions based on more modern principles. Was the ownership of slaves at the time of founding this country, does that disqualify someone from, let's say, having a memorial or being on money? I'm not passing a judgment. But 100 years ago, 150 years ago, we didn't question that. The facts of history, the facts of where our martial arts came from, those are objective but our understanding of them, our interpretation, our value of them, it certainly is subjective. Prior to uh, 
broad ownership of handguns, traditional martial arts was far more applicable to day-to-day -day lives. It is less applicable. Because the, the more guns that are out there, the less valuable a punch is. It's just fact. But it doesn't mean traditional arts don't have value and don't have a place. Even if it has nothing to do with self-defense, it has value. One more. He then said words that have shaped my career. If you're a historian, then your job better be to help people remember not just what they want to remember, but what they need to remember. Those who forget history are doomed to repeat it, etc. Knowing history I think you have a typo. Okay, I thought that was a typo, Andrew. Andrew says, I should learn to punch with a gun. I don't know if you mean holding a gun, because you could do that. You can hold the gun. You could kind of use the handle. Well, you could flip it. Yeah, you don't want to flip it around, because then the barrel's at you. And you could, you could hammer fist. You could pistol whip someone. Come back to this quote. When we teach history, when we read, follow history, we tend to be selective. Because most of the time we're using history to justify actions of the present. When I was in school, for example, we used history to justify the action of dropping nuclear bombs on Japan. I won't get into the specifics. You can read up on that. There have been plenty of other things that we have done that we classify as justified. But the more we take the entirety of history into account, the less justified those terrible actions are. Much of history is about the prioritization of one thing over another, the exclusion of one thing to benefit another. And the more we come to understand who and what, why, the more murky the picture is because life isn't all cut and dry because we're all the heroes in our own story. At any given time, there are now, billions of people trying to live their best lives with limited resources and sometimes actions in opposition to each other. Because while we all, I believe, have the same desire to live a, a healthy, happy, safe existence, we have different ideas of how to do that. And sometimes those ideas end up in conflict. And when you look back at history, you see that that has been consistent throughout time. We gotta get them before they get us. We have to protect them because if they go there, then they'll get us, right? Safety. I don't wanna take that any further, but I think you can probably follow it on, its own, on a path for yourself. I like history. Never would have majored in history, but I appreciate history. If you have Disney Plus, there's some great, great stuff on there. Stuff about pyramids and Mayans. 
great archaeology stuff. All right. Well, we come to an end. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching. Thanks to those of you who contributed live. If you can, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications because we do this show every weekday, 6.30 a.m. Eastern, U.S. time, right here on YouTube. Catch it later in audio form. But we also do a number of other things. We've got martial arts radio and we've got First Cup. Uh, this is First Cup and Whistle Kick Live coming at you. And who knows, maybe some new content coming in the future. If you want to support us, we've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Or you could buy something at the store, whistlekick.com, with the code FIRSTCUP15, get you 15% off. If you have questions, comments, feedback, drop it in the comment section once the show closes, and I will respond to it tomorrow. Thanks for watching, thanks for coming by, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Have a great Monday. Peace.